Hey everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about IT, cybersecurity, education, and career things. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a very realistic day in the life of a principal security analyst. And I know you might be like, oh, you just made a video about being a software engineer. Don't worry, I'll totally address that later. This is like why I don't like titles, but we'll, we'll get into that later in the video. And just so you know what to expect in this video, I'm going to go over my job title, my actual pay, so you can get a, a good idea and maybe get some context around titles and pay and duties and stuff. I'm going to go over what my team does. I'm going to cover what languages and products and tools I use in my day to day. And I'll cover my day to day tasks in a typical day just so you can maybe get like a really good idea or maybe some sense, I guess, of what I do and what you might expect to do in a similar position. And lastly, I'm going to talk about the difficulty of my job, like what I find particularly difficult about it and what I find easy. And then I'm going to talk about whether or not I actually like my job. So smash the like button for the algorithm if you don't mind. And I notice most of the people who watch my videos are not even subscribed to me, uh, which is really crazy to me. So if you watch my videos all the time, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it a lot. So getting right into it, for those who don't already know, uh, I work at Microsoft, but I'm not actually employed by Microsoft. There's another third party kind of consulting slash contracting agency that hired me and I, I technically work for them, but I just work at Microsoft, if that makes sense. And inside of Microsoft, I actually don't even have a title at all. Like if I look up myself in the org chart, I, I just don't have like any title. The principal security analyst title, I actually got that from my consulting firm who I technically work for. That's cool, I guess. I've never been a principal before, so I suppose I will take it. But if you watch my content a lot, I always complain about titles and they're like kind of arbitrary in a sense. But yeah, that's where my title came from of principal security analyst. If I had to pick a title for myself that makes sense for what I do on a day to day, which I'm going to get into, I might pick the title of something like um, maybe like a generic software engineer to be like really generic about it. Or I might pick like automation engineer or automation software engineer or security automation engineer or cloud automation engineer. Like to me, like those things kind of make more sense than principal security analyst. But I do do some security things and the whole thing my team works on is like a security product. So yeah, this that's just some kind of context of why I made this kind of other lighthearted day in the life of video with a software engineer title. It's just like generic and I didn't know what to pick. And I was really like troubled over that for a long time. But anyway, I do a lot of software engineer-esque tasks, but my title is principal security analyst, just so that I guess clears things up a little bit. So getting into my pay for this, again, I'm employed with like a third party company. I'm okay to say who it is, but I don't know if I should like name them and say my salary in the same video. So I won't like name who it is. But anyways, my position, I make about 180k in this position, maybe like a few more cents. You can kind of think about it if you go to levels.fyi and then look at Microsoft SDE2, you can see like the total comp is about 180. It's essentially that but I don't have bonuses or RSUs or like you know stock or any any of that it's just all like cash salary I just get paid out as a contractor at $90 an hour so getting into what my team does and what I do basically I work on the same team as in this video this team develops and maintains Azure security benchmark which is just essentially a framework and some controls and guidance that customers can follow in order to better secure their services in Azure cloud the team that I'm a part of essentially it's a great group of program managers who are in charge of developing and maintaining the Azure security benchmark. But that task is like really monumental, right? Because there's hundreds of services in Azure and each one of those needs to be baselined and each one of them are, are slightly different. Like there is some overlap, but there's like a lot of differences. One of them started developing a system. I'm just gonna refer to it as the automation platform because that's easy. So one of them started developing this automation platform and which requires like a lot of code and cloud infrastructure and just generally a lot of maintenance but that person is a PM. They don't have time to like develop that and maintain it and then do their actual other job too because it, it's quite a lot, right? And it's a lot of context switching. So that's essentially where I came in. Like I got hired to kind of help develop the automation platform and do a lot of the engineering tasks that this team is required to do. And like they can do the tasks themselves. Like they're capable of doing it, but they don't have time to do it because they're super busy. If you've seen like a big tech program manager's calendar, it always looks quite bad in my opinion. But yeah, basically I was hired to help develop and maintain the automation platform and then do all kinds of other little miscellaneous automation and engineering work and kind of help offload that from the PMs. So that's that's essentially my job. So like getting into the actual day-to-day -day details of what I do. I've been working here for about two months now. And if I 
were to kind of break up the work I do in percentages, I would say like probably 70% or so is coding specifically in Python and doing things based around like the automation platform, whether it's like adding features to it or fixing things or optimizing certain things. I would say the next 20% of my time is probably spent working inside of Azure, specifically with Azure Data Explorer, also known as Kusto, and writing KQL queries or Kusto query language queries. You can kind of think about it as SQL, essentially. It's like a Microsoft Microsoft's flavor of SQL. So I write a lot of Kusto queries as well. And then maybe the last 10% of my time is spent um, improving processes and documenting things. A lot of what I do is really dynamic because the group I work with, they interface with like actual customers, like these large businesses, right, who, who use Azure. So they interface with the customer and the customer will ask for something. Uh, I'll get a ticket that says something like query Azure Data Explorer, aka Kusto for this particular information. And once you get it, like dump that information into an Excel file, the whole flow for doing this like ticket, how this would look is essentially I would get the ticket, I'd read it and kind of understand it. I would go to our repo where all the code is. I would create a new branch for this feature or tool. Maybe I'll call it like feature Excel dump. So once a new branch is created, I would clone the repository onto my local computer, for example, and then I would check out the feature Excel dump branch. I would write up the code for it. Probably I'd use Python before like committing the code back to the repo. I would take the output Excel files. Maybe I would show it to the PM group and then they would say like yay or nay or like let's change this or let's change that. And then we'd iterate on that right until my code produced what them and the customer were looking for and then once that looks good i'd write a commit to my local repo and then i would push my code back up to the remote branch and then i might do what's called a pull request that's where like i request the new code that i made to be merged into like the main branch with the rest of the code so i would do a pull request and what happens then is somebody in my group will review the code i wrote and if they find something that can be optimized or i did something wrong we'll kind of iterate on that a little bit he'll like leave a comment saying like, oh, why don't you do this? And then I'll implement it. I'll push it back up to the repo again. And then the person will review it again. And once it looks good, then the code I made with the tool will be kind of merged back into the main branch. And at that point, I would essentially close out that ticket and then try to do something else. Depending on the ticket or how complicated the code is, or if it requires like upstream patching and stuff like this, this process, a ticket can take like anywhere from one day to like a week or something. I will brag like I'm pretty fast at writing code and then the the people on my team are like pretty fast at reviewing it and like helping it and helping me with anything I need help with. So the process like tends to go like pretty quick and I don't have that much downtime in between like making a pull request and the time the thing is like actually reviewed or when I can get feedback that all happens like relatively fast I would say. So that's, that's pretty good. Other example of tickets might be to for example optimize the automation platform it might be to implement some atomicity. So if a job fails, it doesn't like write half the data to the database, fail, and then there's like garbage data left in the database. Another example might be, you know, you need to extend the schema for this table and doing that requires like all these other changes and like all these other, other patches when you do things like extending the schema. Another example might be like adjust verbiage in the automation platform, which is relatively easy, right? Just maybe change a string and then like push it back up to the repo code review and done like those those types are like pretty easy uh, some stuff that i've done that hasn't necessarily been a ticket um i like built and improved on a, a test environment and like the automated testing pipeline where i can run like a lot of automated test cases like when i make major changes to the automation platform i can automatically do like a whole bunch of tests to make sure the code doesn't break anything so i kind of um built and like improved the testing pipeline um i built a, a test environment in azure that kind of i can do like a bunch of tests and then I can run like this data factory pipeline and it will uh, kind of wipe out my environment and like clean it up without me having to do everything. So that's saved me a lot of time. Um, I also helped improve uh, version control and the code review process a little bit. I collaborated on this like quite a bit with somebody who's on my team already and we just kind of we're kind of like trying to make the code review process and everything better because we this is not like a software engineering team. It's like a program manager team, but we're doing engineering inside of it, I guess. We're trying to make that software engineering process better and more matured within the team. So getting into the difficulty of my job, like the things that I find difficult, surprisingly enough, like
like nothing has really been really like algorithmically difficult like i don't know how to code this because like it's just too hard i haven't really ran into anything like that yet um i did need help once there was like a really nasty like triple join kql or like sql command i needed to write and i didn't i didn't understand the environment like well enough to even understand the ask to write that so i needed to get help with that but for the most part nothing's like really really difficult for me and maybe other developers or software engineers might agree with what i'm about to say but the real difficulty like with this job it kind of lies with learning the actual environment and learning how everything is interconnected and like what affects what else like if you change something like what is that going to affect and everything is like really there's a lot of like moving parts all the parts like individually they're not really too complicated like everything is quite simple like the individual pieces of code are relatively trivial right there's no like crazy algorithms or anything like this but the way everything interconnects tends to be kind of difficult it tends to be kind of a lot and it can it can make simple tasks be more difficult just because you have to understand this like extra layer I guess of like what's going on another relatively difficult thing especially for me um, I'm kind of bad at multitasking and I tend to get blinders on when I'm doing something so for example when I was studying algorithms like I didn't post to YouTube for like three months Th that kind of thing happens at this job sometimes too so like maybe I'll have a, a ticket to I have to do like a hotfix or I have to patch the automation platform so I'll I'll make a new branch for the hotfix and I'll be working on this and then maybe there'll be like a customer ask or something where the team like needs a new feature spun up like really quickly so while this branch is being worked on I'll, I'll have to create another branch uh, for this new feature I'm working on and then maybe this feature requires something upstream to be changed so I'll I have to make another branch so maybe I'll have three separate branches I'm working on at any given time it's not like I'm like working on like all three like this but like I'll have like three for me maybe that's a normal thing in, in engineering I don't know but for me that's like kind of hard to like keep track of those things though the code I'm writing maybe I might consider it trivial um it can be make things complicated when I'm trying to work on too many things at once. So that's one thing that's really hard for me. It's just something I have to get used to and kind of record my thoughts so I don't get like too out of control, I guess, and lost. And as far as if I like my job or not, um, the short answer is yeah, it's great. Um, I don't get blocked by a lot of stuff and there's a lot of technical cool work that I get to do regardless of the mission and like Azure Security Benchmark. Uh, working with Azure is cool and being able to code a lot and get experience doing like the whole collaborative version control, code review process, and all that. That's all really enjoyable for me. So yeah, I, I do. I do actually like this job. So basically, come into work, check email, check tickets, do tickets, write a bunch of code, create pull requests, do more tickets, optimize system, make improvements, go home. And yeah, that's essentially day in the life of a principal security analyst or software engineer or however you want to call it. Yeah, super shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me in the channel. I really appreciate it a lot. I'm gonna be hiring a person to do editing soon, so this will definitely help me pay their salary. If you enjoy the channel and you think it's entertaining, please consider subscribing. Again, like most of the people who watch this are not subscribed, so if you don't mind, please subscribe. Really appreciate it a lot. Follow me on Instagram. Instagram. I post a lot of non-tech related things there, like the food I'm eating for the day. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.